Hello everybody and welcome to this processing playground. So today I am dropping in about zoning out. <laughs> and I know for a lot of folks that just feels like, well, no, that means I'm not present. And what I mean is sometimes we need to zone out from all of the external noise and certainly a lot of the news that's going on in the world. And that doesn't mean we bypass it or avoid it, but sometimes it's really important to step away and zone in back to your center. Because here's the thing, there's a lot of, you know, conflict, anger, fear, all of those things. And as much as we have skills and practices to stay centered, we get lost and caught up in the noise. So what I'm suggesting, because I'm noticing a lot of people getting like their, their relationship with their own joy kind of hijacked by all of the, um, you know, the, the things that we're being bombarded with constantly. And we can't show up and be part of the collective change if we are in a state of overwhelm and disconnect. So I just got back from being away in Sardinia, and I know not everybody can go away to Sardinia and go to the Blue Zone, but if you get a chance, it's amazing. Um, and I'm at a point in my life where I've, I've, <laughs> I've done the hustle and I've done all hard work, and I'm a little more my flow. And I just, what I keep learning from all of this, that hard work and that hustle was important at the time, but I think now the times that we're living in, that hard work and hustle doesn't have to be so laborious, that we need more space to zone out from the constant chatter of, you know, who we should be, how we should be, even in the wellness spaces. There's so many courses and so many things to do. And, you know, a lot of them are packed with really valuable tools, but truly the tools, all the stuff that we learn and all the stuff we amass is really the only way through is through. And so sometimes it takes space to sit and be in that kind of blue zone of your own brilliance because it's really not about acquiring more truly it's about letting go and releasing some of the limited beliefs and the assumptions that we have acquired because of conditioning programming and it just happens so the unlearning is important to the learning like we can do both things at the same time so as a yoga teacher for decades and a life coach, some people are like, oh, you do both. I'm yeah, yeah, I'm not an either or. I'm an and also. And yoga at its very roots is about liberation. So all of these like poses that we do, it's not about fancy or getting your leg over your head. And that's great if you can, and I've done it. <laughs> but really, it's so we can strengthen our container so that we're more sturdy. It's called Shtira Sukha Asana. It's like one of the only yoga sutras that talks about asana, which, you know, here in the West, it's what's kind of focused on. So that when we hold these warrior poses, we're strengthening not just our physical body, but our mind and our heart and our complete presence so that we don't check out when things get challenging, when there's conflict or when there's you know, unease that we can still stay in the sensations and not disconnect and disassociate. And the more that we practice that, it's like a commitment and a consistency, we can hold space for paradox, meaning we can hold space to be, I don't know, having a bad mood or angry or sad about what's going on in the world and still hold joy and possibility and inspiration. Like the, we can hold space for all of it. So the sturdier our container and our instrument, the more spacious we are to be present with challenges. So if I can be with conflicting feelings and thoughts within my own being and stay present to get to the kernels of truth, then I can stay spacious in watering those kernels and seeds of truth to the direction I want to take it. This is what is so liberating about yoga because if our desire is just to have peace, that's great, but if we don't liberate where we're not at peace, it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> it's just gonna like slough off, slough off. So I'm offering this because my work as a coach too, I was working with a relatively new client and she's young and she's on her path and she's working so hard and we're, you know, we're doing the rinsing and the processing because she can feel where some of the anger and the rage is, is bubbling into her body and it keeps hijacking her her relationship honestly with being loving and kind to her body in so many ways. 
And so she was saying, you know, I had this like thing that somebody said to me and it brought up so much shame and self beat. And I started having a panic attack for like two days. And I said, what brought you back? And what helped bring her back is to breathe. That's helpful and not have to get it right. Sometimes we have to go into these areas of, oh yeah, I I kind of went into the state that is familiar in this fear response and we navigate that relationship with the fear and the pain that was just surging through her body that was bigger than obviously the the comment and the experience, but something as we unpacked it that has traveled way back to a very young age. That's why I call this the processing playground. Because sometimes these tsunami of feelings that we're experiencing are so much bigger than what's going on because it's, you know, a, a lifetime of accumulated feelings and emotions that were not allowed to be um, expressed or processed at the time. It doesn't mean that you can't do it now. And it doesn't mean you're going to go have to rehash every single <laughs> experience you've ever lived, but it's pausing in the space to give yourself the grace to allow whatever you are feeling to move through in a safe way. That's why, you know, I think as humans, we've been a little bit gaslit on anger and sadness and grief. Like these are super powerful feelings to learn how to navigate so they don't keep taking us into these old time travels, this core trance of not allowing me to be in my zone of beauty and brilliance in the present moment. So what I go said to her, which my teacher said to me yet many years ago, 20 minutes of rinsing and processing or two weeks of hell. For her, it was two days. That's better than me because I had to. Do, I used to do two weeks. But we're so conditioned to keep going into our old patterns because it's it. there is a sense of maybe safety because it's known. So going into the unknown, even if that's the direction you want to go, can be scary for sure. So practicing consistently every day, and I don't mean you know, doing a vinyasa practice, that, that's fine, <laughs> but practicing showing up for yourself and sitting with and processing, physically rinsing when you are in adrenaline and cortisol overwhelm so the, the energy can move through your body and bring you back into your core center. Those core trances are strong. And so as much as our logical mind wants to create new new directions, new pathways, we want to honor that and talking about it and setting affirmations and intentions. Yes. And also the action and energy to unlearn some of those old pathways is very important. So as you plant those seeds and those kernels of change and growth, you keep watering it with that presence of truth and integrate, right? Integrate that. So that trust, we're not seeking other people to, to make us feel better. We're not seeking other things and that's okay if you do, cause we, we all do it, <laughs> but we keep learning through the practice to come back to your sturdy vessel so that you can hold the space for the zone of who you truly are and who you want to keep expanding into. So I have some, some stuff up in my website. Um, and the coaching that I do, you can go to my website. It's miyatoga.com. I am doing a yoga retreat next year in Sardinia because it is such a beautiful, special place. You can go to my website to check that out. It's May 23rd through the 30th. It's going to be different than some of the retreats I've done in the past. A lot slower and more spacious and really zoning in to play and pleasure and joy because it's so important that we center that so that we can keep expanding this world that's in a lot of change and transformation, as you all know, in a direction that doesn't keep repeating the same pain cycles, right? And that is a really personal thing because it affects the collective. It's all connected. And that really is the heart of yoga. We're all interconnected beyond, you know, all the stuff that we see. We need to keep zoning in and coming home to wholeness in your center. So I hope that helps. Thanks for tuning in to this processing playground. Got to keep that play going. <laughs> Possibility, creativity. This is where we dream up new pathways and we're all part of it. All right. Take good care. Lots of love. Many blessings. Bye, everybody.